Okay, now having set everything that needs to be done to get the car started, I want to um, also implement some safeties before we try to start the car because everything's so exciting and the car runs and now we have to go and tune the car. No, wait a minute. Set your safeties before you do anything else because, well, if you forget to set them, then they aren't there and therefore yeah you could blow your engine obviously yes this is a bit over dramatic but it's always a possibility with tuning your car so set your safeties beforehand so you don't end up in a situation later and this is what i'm going to show you now if you have any questions about this subject leave them in the comments down below or hit us up on instagram if you have more complicated questions also about your build about tuning or if you need tuning services done let us also know on instagram we can help you out with anything that you need and also if you like this content feel free to like the video and subscribe to our channel we also appreciate every new subscriber that joins and likes to watch our videos all right, so the last thing because before we are going to start the car, before we are going to prep for the first start, we are setting up some safeties because there is some important stuff that you don't want to forget, which in the heat of tuning a car might happen and therefore we want to set it beforehand. This is first of all the engine protections, mostly rev limiters and the boost cut. For a boosted engine, rev limiter is obviously going to be most important for a normal engine. This is relatively easy. Soft rev limiter is when the timing starts to be retarded. So most of the cars have a soft rev limiter 200 RPM below the hard rev limiter. And for our example, we are going to use a soft rev limiter of 7300 and soft rev, rev limiter mode is the amount of timing it is reduces or is reduced is fixed. This fixes the soft rev limiter timing at one degrees of advance. It does not it does not retard the timing by a set amount. This would be by the relative amount. The relative amount is the timing you put in here so it will retard the timing by the amount of timing you set right here so in theory if you would have 30 degrees of timing and set to 20 it will reduce it by 20 degrees although i like the fixed approach where you just put in five degrees or whatever and um, yeah that's basically where the timing is going to be sitting at when the rev limiter engages. Soft rev, rev limiter maximum time is the time when the how long the rev limiter is engaging. So if you are longer than two seconds on the rev limiter, it will just engage the hard cut rev limiter. And this is not like a two step rev limiter, it is just stopping to inject all the fuel and all or, and uh, stopping to fire the engine so this is just going to cut all events in total and not only like uh, on a hard rev limiter with uh, flames and stuff only only the spark for example but you could also use just the soft rev limiter if you um, select it off for the hard rev limiter so you will have to set a relatively low soft limit uh, timing retard because uh, if you did not say, uh, set it low enough, the engine might still just rev past the 7300 or the rev limit you have set. So just make sure that you have selected a amount of or amount of timing advance or timing retard that actually keeps the engine from revving up and doesn't really well make the engine go further than it is supposed to spin. This is why I suggest always using a hard rev limiter because then you are protected from over spinning the engine. I would set that generally about 200 RPM higher than the soft rev limiter. You can also do some fun stuff like coolant based rev limiters. For example, if your car is still cold, you could limit your RPM to 3000, for example, at let's say up to zero degrees or up to like 40 degrees coolant and then at 5,000 RPM or rather 4,000 RPM at like until like 70 degrees and you want to be able to rev to 
your full 7500 at 90 degrees Celsius coolant and for example if you want to limit the power when the engine gets too hot you would have to select two cells and then put in again uh, 7500 until 99 or let's say 105 degrees or whatever and then go down again and limit maybe to 4500 if the coolant goes above 105 and 210 this will interpolate and therefore you have to select two columns here and then 3000 rpm for example at 115 degrees coolant temperature and therefore you could protect your engine uh, from overheating and um, yeah protect your engine from getting way too hot because you only allow the engine to use its full rev limiter until 105 degrees celsius or only at a minimum of like 70 degrees celsius which is obviously if you know what you're doing or rather if it is your own car nothing uh, something you might not want to set but if it is someone else's car and you are doing the tuning for them something you might want to set especially on a track car because on a track car you don't really monitor the coolant temperature all the time so this might be a good indicator um, on what to do it would be perfect to use all temperature for that but that obviously in this case isn't really available but gauging from 110 to 115 degrees coolant temperature is getting to a point where the also is probably going to also be very hot the oil the next thing is going to be a boost cut this is very important for a boosted car because obviously you don't want to boost higher than um, your tuned for amount or rather not destroy your engine because your engine over boosted for example bending rods or whatever or if just a line to the wastegate for example melts or whatever which can happen on a freshly built car obviously then you just want to set your boost cut to a reasonable amount if you saw our first few videos where we touched on the VE table we set it to a maximum of 230 kPa and I told you that this is going to be our boost cut and this is going to be our boost cut here as well 230 kPa which is 1.3 bar or like I think 21 psi or something this in combination with our VE and spark table is going to save our engine from melting pistons or melting valves or whatever because we are injecting a lot more fuel when before the boost cut even hits and reducing our spark and therefore um, we are protecting our engine as best as we can the problem is that in a case where the engine is going too lean um, obviously we don't have an egt gauge so we can't retard anything or can't make the car boost less by reducing boost levels according to the EGTs so the exhaust gas temperatures but we have to do it in a way so that the EGTs always are low even though we are over boosting and this is why we are injecting more fuel. Something else that you can set but I wouldn't set when tuning is the AFR protection. This is basically a preset depending on what AFRs uh, you are trying to reach on your AFR target table and you can set a variation that is a maximum before the engine is going to cut fuel or do something else so that um, you don't run too lean or too rich. You can set that up but only when your engine is perfectly tuned to your target table because if it isn't and these values deviate too much from your set AFR table you're constantly gonna have uh, boost cuts and this is not going to be fun at all. And another thing is oil pressure. This is also something you can set to. I don't have an oil pressure sensor activated at the moment but you could tell the engine that it could uh, cut the cut RPM or cut um, the engine completely if it does not see the correct amount of oil pressure at a certain amount of rpm so you can add a table in here because obviously your oil pressure is not going to be the same always because when you start your engine cold your oil pressure is going to be for example 60 psi but when your engine is warm and the oil heats up and therefore gets thinner your oil pressure is going to drop to like 
30 PSI or whatever. And so you have to have a table that is for the specific oil pressure at a specific temperature and at a specific RPM because the oil pressure obviously raises, rises per RPM. And that's something you can set up as well. But I would also suggest just looking at your oil pressure for now and setting up something like this only when you are done tuning. Last thing is the common entrant protection. This is only basically when you, what type of hard cut method you are using that we decided in our other rev limiter. So hard limiter method and this is the configuration exactly for that. The protection cut would be two options, spark only, fuel only or both. So both would be the engine does not fire, does not inject fuel. On spark cut it will still inject fuel and then we will get uh, uh, loud pops and bangs and although this is very very bad for your engine i would rather recommend fuel only because or both both would be best because that protects the engine best if you want flames or whatever just use a two-step rev limiter because you can set that much lower than this and it is not going to kill your engine here you can also set the protection rpm limit which is the protection when something like the boost cut kicks in or whatever it does not only cut your power for a short period of time so for example in a boost cut it will cut fuel and spark but it will also throw a check engine light or not a check engine light but go into a sort of limp mode and limit your example uh, your rpm for example to 4500 if you for example uh, went over the select boost limit or the oil pressure protection or AFR protection or coolant protection, then it will limit your RPM to a specific or to this RPM. And um, this is basically then your limp mode and your car has to be turned off and on again or the ECU to reset that specific limp mode. Again, at the top, we are have something else here, which is the cut method. Um, I wouldn't really recommend that because this is how much spark or fuel is the engine going to cut at a hard limiter i would recommend just leaving this on full because again this is the other thing i talked about with the soft rev limiter if you don't cut enough of this um, then it will not stop the engine from revving past the rev limiter so just leave that on full and then let the engine cut everything that is there that's basically it for protection Again, as I said, there is some stuff you could also do if you want to set up a oil pressure sensor, for example, as I told you right now, we don't have it. You could do that with accessories and fuel and oil pressure. You have to turn it on, on, then select what pin you are using and select your sensor. Um, if you have, for example, have a 0, 0.0 to 5 volt sensor, you can just put in the values here and then click on burn and then you can also just use that oil pressure um, graph or rather oil pressure table to be used for your specific protection mechanism. That's basically everything for the engine protection. On the Speedwino, you don't have as much possibilities for example uh, as for example in a mega squirt unit or ECU master where you can dial back the boost levels or even RPM or ignition timing by um, EGTs or for example other circumstances that appear when you are driving. Um, on the Speedwino issues this is very rudimentary so keep that in mind when you are driving your car on the track that there is not going to be as much protection involved and that you have to look at most of the stuff yourself as a driver. And um, yeah that's just something to note because it's not that simple. And as always this is going to be the last video for the base map and then the next video we are going to prepare the car for a first startup. And um, yeah, again, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you did and subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, see you next time.